Good day everyone! Welcome sa paribago nating tutorial series. So this is Information Assurance and Security 2 series. This is part 5 and for today we are going to talk about Network Security Threats, Vulnerability and Attacks. Okay, this course provides learners with a baseline understanding of common network security threats, vulnerabilities and risk. An overview of how basic network attacks are constructed and applied to a real system. And here's what you'll find out on this presentation. Essential technologies, network security concerns, network security threats and attacks, and last, network security vulnerabilities. And the first topic that we are going to discuss is about essential technologies. So today, we rely on internet for many of our day-to-day -day stops, whether we are in the organization or we are at home. We are connected to the outer world by anyhow through internet. So there are many people that we call them hackers or attackers that wants to damage our computer systems and wants to take access of our devices for personal and official information to violate our privacy and so on. So you can see here, it's 81% of network vulnerabilities are going right now. Pulsak Vulnerability View represents the number of vulnerabilities by categorizing it into network and application and its critical level. As you can see, it's 2% high and critical risk in network layer attacks. And 19% of high and critical risk for web layer or application layer attacks. So we have here essential terminologies. First, we have data breach. A data breach involves the release of sensitive information and there are many types of online attacks have a primary goal of causing a data breach to release information such as login credentials and personal financial data. Millions of people are affected by data breaches every year and they can range in scope from a doctor accidentally looking at the wrong patient's chart and to a large-scale attempt to access government computers to uncover sensitive information. Data breaches are the major security concern because sensitive data is constantly being transmitted over the internet. This continuous transfer of information makes it possible for attackers in any location to attempt data breaches on almost any person or business they choose. Data is also stored in digital form by businesses over the world. The servers that stores the data are often vulnerable to various forms of cyber attack. A vulnerability in cybersecurity refers to any weakness in an information system, system processes, or internal control of an organization. These vulnerabilities are targets for lurking cyber criminals and open to exploitation through the points of vulnerability. Examples of vulnerabilities are the weakness in a firewall that can lead to malicious hackers getting into a computer network, lack of security cameras and unlocked doors at businesses. An attack is an action that is done on a system to get its access and extract sensitive data. An exploit is a breach of IT system security through vulnerabilities in the context of an attack on a system or network. Exploitation is that the next step in the attacker's playbook when finding a vulnerability. Exploits are the means that through a vulnerability may be leveraged for malicious activity by hackers. These include pieces of software system, sequences of commands, or maybe open supply exploit kits. An exploit could be a code that takes advantage of a software vulnerability or security flow. Okay, so botnet is a collection of innocent computers which have been compromised by malicious code in order to run a remote control agent granting an attacker the ability to remotely take advantage of the system's resources in order to perform illicit or criminal actions. These actions include DOS flooding attacks, hosting false web services, spoofing DNS, transmitting spam, eavesdropping on network communications, recording voice, IP communications, and attempting to crack encryption or password hashes. Botnets can be compromised of dozens to over a million individual computers. The term botnet is a shorted form of robotic network. Dark web is also sometimes called the deep web, when in fact, the dark web is only part of a deep web. 
Surface Web is what we call the regular World Wide Web that is indexed and websites are easy to find. The Deep Web is the unindexed part of the web. Actually, anything that is search engine can't find. Okay, a threat is a possible danger that can exploit an existing bug or vulnerability to compromise the security of a computer or networks. Or it refers to anything that has the potential to cause serious harm to a computer system. So, in a zero-day attack, the attacker exploits vulnerabilities in a computer application before the software developer can release a patch for them. Based on common usage of exploit terms, an exploit is said as a zero-day exploit once it's want to attack a vulnerability that has been identified however not yet patched. Payload is the part of malware or an exploit code that performs the intended malicious actions which can include creating backdoor access to a victim's machine, damaging or deleting files, committing data theft, and hijacking computer. Hackers use various methods to execute the payload. For example, they can activate the logic bomb, execute an infected program, or use an unprotected computer connected to a network. Farming is a type of cyber attack involving the redirection of web traffic from a legitimate site to a fake site for the purpose of stealing usernames, passwords, financial data, and other personal information. When you type a URL into your browser's address bar, like www.google.com, for example, several background processes have to happen before you see the familiar Google logo or search box on your computer screen. During a farming attack, cyber criminals discreetly manipulate those processes, sending your web traffic a malicious website instead of the one you intended to visit. The destination site may load malware on your computer. More often than not, it's a bogus phishing site. So basically, a farming is a mashup of words phishing and farming. Next, we have whaling attack. Whaling attack is a method used by cyber criminals to masquerade as a senior player at an organization and directly target the senior or other important individual at an organization with the aim of stealing money or sensitive information or gaining access to their computer systems for criminal purposes. It is also known as CEO fraud. Whaling is similar to phishing in that it uses methods such as email and website spoofing to trick a target into performing specific actions such as revealing sensitive data or transferring money. And last, we have the doxing. Doxing is the act of revealing identifying information about someone online such as their real name, home address, workplace, financial, and other personal information. That information is then circulated to the public without the victim's permission. So next, we have here five goals of cybersecurity. So the first is confidentiality. Confidentiality keeping sensitive information private. Encryption services can protect your data address or in transit and prevent unauthorized access to protected data. Next, we have integrity. Integrity is the consistency of data, networks, and systems. This includes mitigating and proactive measures to restrict unapproved changes while also having ability to recover data that has been lost or compromised. Availability refers authorized users that can freely access the systems, networks, and data needed to perform their daily tasks. Resolving hardware and software conflicts along with regular maintenance is crucial to keep systems up and available. An authenticity or authentication is a process that ensures and confirms a user's identity or role that someone has. Authentication is the necessity of every organization because it enables organizations to keep their network secure by permitting only authenticated users to access its protected resources. These resources may include computer systems, networks, databases, websites, and other network-based applications or services. Non-reputation is the assurance that the sender of information is provided with proof of delivery and the recipient is provided with proof of the sender's identity. So, neither can later deny having processed the information. So, it is protection against an individual falsely denying having performed a particular action and it provides the capability to determine whether the given individual took a particular action such as creating information 
sending a message, approving information, and receiving a message. Let's move on the network security concerns. So the question, what is network security? Network security is the process of taking preventative measures to protect the underlying network infrastructure from unauthorized access, misissue, malfunction, modification, destruction, or improper disclosure. Implementing these measures allows computers, users, and programs to perform their permitted critical functions within a secure environment. Securing a network requires a complex combination of hardware devices, such as routers, firewalls, and anti-malware software applications. Government agencies and businesses employ highly skilled information security analysts to implement security plans and constantly monitor the efficiency of these plans, and typically consists of three different controls. First, we have the physical network security. This is the most basic level that includes protecting the data and network through unauthorized personnel from acquiring the control over the confidentiality of the network. This includes external peripherals and routers might be used for cable connections. The same can be active by using devices like biometric systems. Second, we have technical network security primarily focuses on protecting the data stored in the network or data involved in transactions through the network. This type serves two purposes. One, protection the unauthorized users and the other being protection from malicious activities. And third, we have the administrative network security. This level of network security protects users' behavior like how the permission has been granted and how the authorization process takes place. This also ensures the level of sophistication the network might need for protecting it all the attacks. This level also suggests necessary amendments that have to be done over the infrastructure. Network security specialists, sometimes called information security analysts, they plan and implement security measures to protect organizations' computer networks and computer systems from viruses and cyber attacks. They may identify compromised machines and report on the security measures taken to the address threats. A network security specialist is responsible for setup and maintenance of hardware and software system designed to ensure network security in the following ways. It deploys, tests, and maintains security systems like VPNs, firewalls, and email security. Communicates with management to promote security best practices. And last, confirms that the current network security system is suitable for future requirements. A network security specialist supports the IT security team. They will identify and solve network problems both remotely and on-premise. Some network security specialists research, evaluate, recommend, and implement other security devices as well. This could include installing computer security software, conducting regular security audits, and gathering evidence regarding cyber crimes. Network security specialist roles can vary in title depending on the industry. Some jobs fall under the title information security analyst, IT security specialist, or network security engineer. Ayan. So that's it for this video and hoping na may natutunan kayo about introduction of Information Assurance Security 2. At kung may mga katanungan kayo, contact nyo lang ako through email or chat. Okay? So see you on the next video.